What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Waveshare 11.9 inch touchscreen LCD. Now this is an IPS panel, but it's not your regular old monitor or display. It's actually a pretty cool little setup here and we'll get to it in a second. But Waveshare has kind of designed this around the Raspberry Pi mounting on the back, but it does support HDMI so we can use PCs like this mini PC here powered by a Celeron CPU. Now, like I mentioned, this isn't your regular old monitor or display. This is coming in with a resolution of 320 by 1480. Inside of the box, we get a smaller HDMI cable, a little cleaning cloth for the glass cover on the front of the panel, and our mounting hardware. So we can actually mount up the Raspberry Pi right on the back of this. And uh, as you can see here, it's definitely an odd little display. Not really meant for a desktop operating system, but I'm sure we could actually use it as that and we will test it out. But this is more of a project panel in my opinion. There's a lot of different things that we can do with this and I got a couple projects planned but I did want to take a look at it because I've had my eye on these for a while. I've seen them all over the internet from eBay to Amazon and I finally bit the bullet and picked this one up. So what we have here is an 11.9 inch IPS panel. It's covered in glass and it does support touch. Got HDMI in, a touch input which is micro USB and power. So the adapters they include here are going to be compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4. They're basically just HDMI adapters and USB adapters for the included touch on the screen. We do need to run this over USB from the Pi to get that touch and power to the panel. So around back here we have two different mounting spots. We've got these outer posts here which will allow us to kind of mount this to let's say a wall. And the inner post which actually support the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Raspberry Pi 3. So we can set this up with the Pi mounted to the back of it, and it's actually pretty compact when we plug in these adapters. So I will be testing this with the Raspberry Pi and one of my PCs, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in the standoffs for the Pi to sit on top of. Comes with all the hardware we need. So we'll get all four of these in, and once we do that, we can actually set the Pi right on here and just mount it up. Now I would recommend plugging in the USB adapter first before you mount this on here. It does make it a little easier. It's going to plug right into one of the USB 3.0 ports on the Raspberry Pi 4. This is going to supply power to the panel and allow us to use touch. So we do have USB connection to the touch panel in here. So we'll go ahead and mount this Pi down with four screws. And once that's finished up, we're going to go ahead and plug in our HDMI adapter. So one end is full size for the panel. The other one is a micro HDMI for the Raspberry Pi 4. And once it's finished up, it looks something like this. Very compact design. We've got that Raspberry Pi 4 mounted right to the back of this thing and everything lines right up. So obviously, first up, we're going to be testing out the Raspberry Pi 4 with this panel. And I've just installed Raspberry Pi OS to a micro SD card. I'm going to run through a couple other things after this, but let's go ahead and get this booted up. Okay, so I got this up and going with the Raspberry Pi 4, but I did run into one big issue. The included adapter, the little HDMI adapter is non-functional. There's a bent pen inside of it. I've actually purchased a lot of stuff from Waveshare on Amazon in the past and never run into an issue, but this could present a big issue to some people. So if you do get one of these, make sure you inspect that adapter. I mean, this is a real big letdown because I had a couple little plans for this video, but unfortunately with this big cable sticking out of the top, it's not going to work out like I wanted it to. But the screen quality on this thing is actually really nice. It is a touch panel, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And in order to get this set up correctly with the Raspberry Pi, you can head over to Waveshare's wiki page. And all you need to do is input the new resolutions and the rotation into your config.txt. After I realized that the adapter wasn't working, everything went really smooth. But before that, you know, I did reflash it a few times because I didn't take the time to inspect that HDMI adapter that came included. So I did waste some time with this. I'm running Raspberry Pi OS right now, and this screen really isn't great for a desktop operating system. Uh, this was the first thing I wanted to install on it, just to see if I could get everything up and running with the Raspberry Pi 4. Got a lot of screen missing here, and really when it comes down to it, this is more of a project panel. I would actually like to put this inside of one of my project cars, and uh, kind of have a little audio player. It'd be pretty cool, but you know, adding an Android tablet is going to be the easiest way to go with something like that. A little weather station mounted on the wall before you walk out the door would be pretty cool. You could set this up vertically or in portrait mode. It's really up to you. I think with kind of a little weather station, setting this up vertically would be pretty awesome. You could get the humidity, you know, weather, what's going on today, and everything like that right on the panel itself. But there will be a lot of software setup you need to do with this. 
Now, my main use case scenario for something like this would be with my gaming PC, setting it up as kind of a sensor panel or a stat monitor, whatever you want to call it. Now, there's actually several ways to go about this. You could use something like the Mod Bros sensor panel software for the Raspberry Pi if you wanted to still use the Raspberry Pi. But this screen does have HDMI, and when it comes to IDA64, it does have sensor panel support. So with my glass panel on, I could set this up inside of the case and get all of my information on the PC as it's running. Or if you're not into that, I mean, you could always set this up with some type of video or design on it so it just makes the case look cool. It's really up to you in the end. Now this is the simple one here. I have not modified it. This is kind of a template that you download from Ida64's website. It's got basically everything you need, but you can make it look really, really good. And if you're interested, let me know in the comments below. I can do a full video. And real quick, I just wanted to show you it running in portrait mode on the Raspberry Pi. Still got Raspberry Pi OS. But yeah, I mean, I could definitely see some gauges all the way down this screen, kind of mounted right beside the door for a nice little weather station. But it's definitely not meant for a desktop environment. We just don't have enough screen space here. But for a project panel, I think this thing is actually pretty cool. And one thing I've actually been seeing a lot are these things called cyber decks. I'm not exactly sure who originally came up with it. But uh, mounting this to a keyboard or even the Raspberry Pi 400 would make a cool little setup for like terminal use. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this, but you know, I wouldn't recommend this for a desktop environment or even emulation, but it's a great little project panel. Little upsetting that the HDMI adapter was damaged, but I did get this on Amazon so I can return it very easily or just exchange it is what I'm going to be doing. That way they'll just send me a whole new unit and I'll get one of those new adapters with it. And uh, like I mentioned, I have ordered a lot of screens from Waveshare from Amazon and never run into a problem in the past. So this might be a one-off issue, but just keep that in mind. It was disappointing. So now that I have a panel like this, there are a few little projects that I'd like to do. So now that I have a panel like this, there are a few little projects that I'd like to do before I go ahead and permanently mount this inside of my gaming PC. I would like to create a little cyber deck with a Raspberry Pi or maybe something a little more powerful, but it does need to be battery powered. And uh, maybe doing a weather station or something like that would be a cool little video. So if you want to see any of those, or if you have any suggestions, just let me know what it is in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I figured I'd do a quick video on this because in the past I have had a few viewers asking about these kind of extended monitors and how well they work with the Raspberry Pi. And this one here actually looks really great with that IPS panel and that glass cover. I've seen these online from different manufacturers with plastic covers and glare was going to be a real issue. That was something I was worried about and that's really why I opted for the glass. And you can actually get these without touch built in. They're going to be a bit cheaper, but I opted for touch because like I mentioned, there are a few little projects I want to get out of the way before I go ahead and permanently mount this. If you're interested in learning more about this panel, I will leave a couple links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.